everything all right? Yes, everything is all right, and we can see you. And I think for a brief moment, um, we can switch the camera just so that you see that now all the seats or as many seats as we can give away are really taken. And suddenly there's an audience here. <laughs> Hello. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you, Abuza Amini. I just uh, told our audience already that um, you are in Istanbul right now. You live in the Netherlands, but right now we're talking to you from, from Istanbul. Um, everything fine there? Yes, yes. I, I, uh, I just came back from a shooting in Iraq for my new film. So I needed uh, a couple of days of rehabilitation. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, unfortunately, we hear you really well. Unfortunately, the image is stalled for the moment, um, but maybe it's gonna come back, you think? Um, I looked at your Twitter account and um, I read this epigraph or model on your Twitter account. Um, I'm briefly going to say it in German. Kunst ist die abgelagerte Geschichte menschlicher Misere. So in English, art is the sediment and history of human misery. And I was wondering how this approach has um, yeah, affected you when you made this film, Kabul City in the Wind. Uh, right. Uh, well, that, that was from my uh, university time. And uh, the thing is that we didn't choose for art and uh, cinema. It's, uh, it's like a condition that we live in. And that is our way to reflect on that. We see what happens around us. We experience that. We live with it. And we have to do something. And I choose uh, film, the language of cinema, to tell the story of that region and, um, and go deeper than only the, what, what we see in the media. That is the art for me. It's living with them. The yeah. Um... Anne-Kathrin Brinkmann already told um, us about the, the, the story of your the filmmaking process. You made this film in 2018 or you completed it. Now, this has been a couple of years and the film has now a life on its own and you're probably a bit detached from it, but I would like to know what, what are you still really strongly attached to and what do you want us to, um, to pay attention to when we now see the film? I'm sorry, the connection oh. is very weak. Let me just try another, another uh, internet just in 10 seconds. Hello. Oh, yeah, hello. Welcome back. Yeah. Okay, my last question was, um, what do you want us to pay special attention to in the film? What are you still really attached to when you think about your film? Uh, in short, uh, the life, the mm -hmm. passion for life, that is the most important thing for myself. Uh, I know how passionate the people in Afghanistan are for life uh, in all ages, children, elderly, men and women. They grab every opportunity to feel a bit happy and uh, uh, progress, go to school, plant a tree, have a tea with the family, laugh and joke and sing, especially singing mm -hmm. at this. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that is for me the most beautiful aspect, uh, the beautiful characteristic of that nation uh, in, a, in an environment of uh, 
a never-ending war since 40 years. And uh, I think uh, it's beautiful to see that, how uh, uh, how alive they are they they try to be mm -hmm. yeah now you you made your film years before the taliban um took over came back to power like they did last this no this year it's still 2021 um what's your assessment of the current situation in afghanistan how and how does it affect you as a filmmaker i'm sure you would like to go back there and film again for sure, I will go back. And for sure, all my friends who uh, ex escaped will go back. Uh, this is not the first time I escaped Taliban. This is my second time. First time I was only 14 years when they destroyed our Buddha in Bamiya, the two biggest statues. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, I went back after years of... Uh, living in the Netherlands. I went to school, I went to university, and I, I went back to Afghanistan to, to rebuild that country and uh, to work together with my friends, my uh, uh, people from Afghanistan. So we started to uh, tell our own stories. I started a small production company in Kabul, being, uh, with young people my age and uh, very selective, very uh, accurate, very uh, small, but uh, we we had some dreams. And uh, so I nearly lived there for the past seven years. And, uh, but unfortunately we had to escape again uh, this time. And this time was harder for us because it was not only uh, the aggressors that we knew, but it was also a bit of betrayal that we felt by the international communities. Those who were uh, uh, shouting uh, democracy, those who were uh, calling human rights, all of them were silent suddenly and uh, sold the people to the most aggressive terrorist group in the world. But uh, this is not the end. We are alive uh, mm -hmm. and there is hope. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, I, I, I'm sure I cannot even imagine in my unconsciousness that I will not go back. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you about the protagonists in your film that we are soon going to see. Um, the two boys, Afshin and his younger brother, Benjamin, and Abbas, the bus driver. Are you still in touch with them? And what's their situation today? Yes, uh, we were lucky to manage to bring uh, the children to the Netherlands during those evacuation days. And they with their family live now in the Netherlands, uh, starting to learn the language and uh, uh, visiting me in Amsterdam sometimes and uh, I visit them. So uh, uh, yes, uh, at least I'm happy that uh, I don't worry about them. And, uh, but uh, some other characters from our film are still in Afghanistan and uh, we are still in contact. Even yesterday, I had a call with them. So the economy is going really down in Afghanistan because, I mean, they cannot govern a country. They are made for fight, not govern. Mm -hmm. And it's going, we are waiting to get worse, I think. Uh, um, so this is the, the newest update from their side. Uh, I hope. I can get a bus out of country as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we hope so. We hope so too. Um, I want to ask you one final question about your current or your new film project, um, Ways to Run, it's, it's the title. Could you tell us a little bit about it? That is my first uh, feature film which I wrote uh, since uh, three years ago until now, until uh, recent time. 
it's been written about the city Kabul uh, uh, with the soul of, of Kabul from my perspective. And um, a lot of music, it's about the music from the 60s. And, uh, um, but yeah, we were, uh, according to our schedule, we were supposed to shoot the film in September. Uh, by now we must have been done shooting. Uh, we have prepared everything, uh, location scout. We bought the props and we did a lot of rehearsal with the, with the actors. Well, they are non-actors, but uh, still we did a lot of rehearsal. So everything was ready to shoot. We were financed um, so that the, everything changed, uh, of course. And... Uh, but but I don't want to let it go. This is a film uh, for Kabul, and uh, everything has been broken by by them. So I don't let them to damage this one. Although the soul of the film is gone, we lost our location. But this is not the end. This is another cinematic challenge for me to 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 still tell my story in one or another aesthetic way. Uh, and still preserve those important elements that I wanted to tell. I mean, Afghanistan is gone, but I have an Afghanistan inside myself. All right, I wish I could continue talking to you, but I think the time is over and now the audience would like to see your yeah. film. Abuza, thank you so much for talking to me and to us here. Natasha will just turn the camera so that you will see the audience. And I wish you a lot of strength and hope and good luck with all your future projects. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Abuza. Bye.